Welcome to episode six of the Sourcing Talent Show. My name is Mark Lundgren. In this weekly show, I'll be having conversations with sourcers from around the world to find out how they got into sourcing, what exciting projects they're working on, and what tools they use. In this week's episode, I talked to Schmila from the Turin from the company Pokey in the Netherlands to talk about how she got into sourcing, what exciting tools she's working with, and what she'll be speaking about at SourceCon in Budapest. First, I asked Jamila how she got into sourcing. I, I haven't been doing this for a long time. Uh, I started in 2015. Um, I, uh, I didn't know anything about sourcing or tech or <laughs> I was working at a, a, Im, a vegetable import uh, company. So I was literally buying uh, cauliflower over the phone. And then this uh, friend uh, asked me to come uh, work for them uh, at Hero Business Solutions. It was an agency who uh, who uh, placed freelancers at big clients, and they needed a hunter. Hunter, I don't, you know. Uh, <laughs> so I said, yeah, well, I can do the interview. I mean, uh, they they want someone with a personality type that was red, if you know the disc profiles. So. Um, I really liked it. I liked the idea of just looking on the internet for stuff and I know I'm really curious. So I thought, yeah, well, let's do this. Uh, and if it doesn't work, I'll find something else. Uh, uh, that's how I got in. And it didn't take me long before I realized I, I really liked it because uh, uh, in my free time, I would start reading everything I can about sourcing, well, uh, recruitment at that time, because I had no idea what sourcing was. And uh, uh, every vacancy I found, I was going through books about what's, what's this technology and how does this work? And if I didn't know, I would just ask uh, candidates I was speaking to. That's how I got in. And I think after a few months, I got into the recruitment community a bit by just finding groups on Facebook, reading blogs. I found out about a thing called sourcing. <laughs> so that, yeah, wow. <laughs> that was a, um, <laughs> that was like a big one for me. Then I was like, I'm not a hunter. I hate that word. Like it makes me feel, I'm a sorcerer, guys. Uh, I think this is what I am. Um, because in the company, there was no one who did this before. They had a, well, a recruiter who just, um, uh, well, we went through resumes of applicants. Uh, that's it. So I had to create my own role and find people. And that's how I, uh, I didn't have anyone telling me these are the lines where you have to stay in, but they said, go wild, do it. <laughs> okay. That's, I did that for two years. Um, I didn't really like the calling part. I didn't really like the stalking people part. That's how it felt for me. Um, because I'm really, I'm not good at it. I'm not good at calling people and saying, hi, I'm Shamila, uh, uh, you know? <laughs> so uh, then, uh, then I, I found my way into a corporate or uh, in-house recruiting, uh, sourcing recruiting uh, was a combined role. Uh, and I really liked that because it gave me the room to uh, learn a lot about recruitment. Uh, you know, the, uh, setting up processes in companies, uh, talking in-house with a team, really getting to know the people mm -hmm. uh, in there. Uh, so I've been doing that. And now I'm working at Pokey as a technical recruiter. Uh, I'm the only recruiter in there. I, um, so I'm not only a sorcerer. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm a sorcerer and recruiter. I mainly focus on the tech roles over there because, well, that's the part we need to scale. Um, so I do a lot of sourcing, but I also do uh, well, full stack recruiting from the front to the end. Uh, we're a small team, 30 people. So there's a lot of chance to really build uh, a sourcing uh, strategy, how I see, uh, well, how I think it should be. So, that makes yes. sense. And what, yeah, was, right? like, what was some of the, the books that you read or the people that you were following when you were kind of learning the whole sourcing and recruiting game? Yeah. Um, I started out with, um, there's this book, I think, uh, IT Recruitment for Dummies, <laughs> something like that. Uh, it was really funny to read. That's the first book I read uh, about recruitment. And from there, I, uh, I started uh, to, to be part of the Boolean Strings community. I think mm -hmm. it's hosted by Irina. 
Irina, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Irina. Um, and uh, you had the recruitment daily, starting to watch a lot of webinars, uh, started following people like Dean De Costa, Glenn Ketty, they, um, on the internet, reading their blogs. Um, when there was a conference like uh, Sourcing Summit or SourceCon, I would try to find uh, the, <laughs> the, uh, the presentation somewhere and save them and those kind of things. We've talked about that before. Uh, and that's, yeah, that's how I got all my information. Another thing I started following was the SourceCon community, of course, mm -hmm. Facebook groups. I had a lot of help of the recruitment community in the Netherlands. We have a Slack group where mm -hmm. I'm in. Um, and there we share a lot of things, um, talk to each other. Uh, I really made some good friends over there. I think that's the most important thing in sourcing is having a sourcing buddy or mm -hmm. some, yeah. someone just to talk with and just to uh, discuss new ideas and someone who says, yeah, you can do that. Or, you know, I think that's really important when you're alone in a company as the only sourcer or recruiter. What does that typical week look for you now? <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's kind of hard. I'm kind of thinking about ways how I can be, how I can spend my time more on sourcing and less on scheduling agendas because that's kind of a waste of time because I think I'm well, quite doing well on the sourcing part. And um, so, and, and the founders of the company, I work closely with them, are really open to that. And we're thinking of ways how can we, like, well outsource things like planning agendas and stuff um but a typical week for me looks like different every week i don't think there's a there's a day where i do the same thing um one thing that was interesting during uh, sourcecon uh, last week i spoke with natalie and she told me about how thoughtworks is um uh, designing their weeks in sprints, uh, like one week sourcing, one week, uh, you know, and that was something that really inspired me to do that maybe on a less, well, on a smaller scale, do it on a day to day basis. So say, hey, Monday, I'm going to uh, spend my time in uh, like talking to everyone, having my meetings in the company. Tuesday, I'm spending my full day on sourcing. Wednesday, I'm going to spend my full day on outreaches. Um, that's something I'm looking into now. How is that going to work? So, um, uh, so I don't really have a structure right now. I just do my thing and the, I'm really happy that I don't have 20 positions to fill. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I can figure that out right now. Um, yeah, but that's something I would like to learn from other recruiters, uh, how they do that. The thing I'm struggling most with, with the role I have as a recruiter and as a sourcer, because uh, is, yeah, how do you manage your time? Where, what's the priority? Uh, should I follow uh, up by uh, really long calls, you know, uh, spend a lot of time on rejecting people, uh, applicants, or spend, should I spend my time on sourcing the right candidate instead of having applicants Th those yeah those are the decisions i have to make and i choose to make the application process a little bit harder so i would only ha like i would know directly when i have a good applicant who is really motivated and otherwise i rather source them um th those are kind of things i'm looking for and playing around with uh, at the yeah. moment i mean there's a lot of the things that we look at as well like from a statistics point of view how many you know how many inbound applicants does it take to get a hire compared yeah. to how many source candidates to a hire and how many referral candidates to a hire yeah. um, and that's the kind of thing we go around with our teams as well and say look you need this many applications to get one hire you need this many you know source candidates the thing you can control is your source candidates because you can control how many how much time you put into that you have less control over the volume and the quality of the inbound candidates. Because it's like, if you need to double your number, you can throw a lot of money on, on job ads, but you still don't know if you're gonna double your inbound number. And even if you do, you don't know if the quality is what you need it to be. No, true, absolutely. So, uh, so there goes a lot of time in finding out what's the quality of the person who applied. Mm -hmm. Well, when I'm sourcing and when I'm uh, 
I might do it a little, little bit different than a lot of sources do. <laughs> so what, what I do is I work closely together with the team. Uh, I did it at my previous job at Blendl, also a startup. And um, I would define at the beginning of the funnel, like when I'm building my talent pool, if I like someone or not, and if the team likes someone or not. When, because when I do my outreaches, which are hyper personal, <laughs> it's also what I'm talking about uh, at SourceCon, uh, I want to know for sure that this is the person that I want. I don't want to waste my time on talking to people who I don't want after all. Um, so I want their uh, consent upfront. And luckily enough, I have a, like the team is small and they have the time and they uh, mm -hmm. hiring is like everyone's priority over here. Uh, so that's something that, uh, that really helps me doing my job and sending good and uh, creative outreaches and spend my time on doing that. Uh, I think yeah. that's, uh, uh, well, that's maybe different than how other companies do. I see a lot of people sending like hundreds uh, messages in one click. And that's something that I really don't like personally, because um, I have the feeling that I'm, I'm a human being and I'm reaching out to a human being. And I want that, I want to have a connection with someone that I talk to and I want them to know that I really care. And even though if they're not the right person now or for this job that I really care about them, I generally do. So mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's, um, but I get that when you're in a company with 2000 <laughs> positions to fill every year, it's completely different. Uh, so then I think there's a lot of small changes people can make to, uh, make it better uh, and that's your so that's what you're speaking about in uh, in source yeah. in Budapest as well then yeah I'm speaking about creative outreaches uh, mm -hmm. and uh, personal outreaches what I like to do for uh, is use code pen for example to uh, to uh, I would fork a project uh, and I would turn it into something that is pokey related or that is really personal. So they know I found their code, code, code pen project for this example, code pen, and that I, uh, well, that I played around with it. And sometimes I need the help from a developer because I'm not a developer, but the other time it's just as easy as turning their image into my image, for example, because if you know how a link <laughs> what in URL looks like, you know how to replace it. Um, so it isn't that hard, but it makes it really personalized. Um, I would just send them that via Twitter. Hey, look at my project. Found this guy's website and he had this whole typing uh, thing describing who he was. I just found the library uh, and made the same thing and I reached to him. Hey, I really like your stuff. Do you like ours too? XO, XO. That's something uh, that I really like to do. Um, uh, and that makes it more human because they know I spent time on them. Yeah. And I really care. And, uh, uh, or just like go through um, GitHub trending and uh, check people up over there. And if I like them, I would send them a message. Hey, see your trending or hey, uh, you're working on this, that. Uh, I would look together with a developer and ask them, what do you like about this person? Why would you want to work with this person based on what I show you? Uh, I'll give them a package like, hey, this is the information I found about them. Go look at it, come back to me. Uh, and it's as, it's as simple as that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, that's something I'm talking about. Uh, that was the first idea, or I started out with the whole, I made a statement when I, when I started my talk and it was like, we spend a lot of time on finding the perfect candidate, we do, but we don't spend as much time on creating a personal or creative outreach, uh, right? So, right? Um, yeah. But then I thought, yeah, it, this is kind of a bold statement. I, I have no idea, this is just a gut feeling, you know? So uh, what I did is send a uh, type form to uh, the recruiters in my uh, Dutch corporate recruitment Slack, and um, they filled it in, and then I found out, yeah, well, okay, this, what I, what I thought was true. Uh, we don't spend enough time or 
a lot of time on outreach just compared to the time we spend on sourcing. And I thought, okay, well, this is a problem, but I don't know if it's a problem. Do the developers actually don't like it or are they fine with the way they get the matches? So I <laughs> sent this uh, another type form to 40 developers in my network and I asked them like, what do you what's the best outreach you ever received how do you want to where do you want to receive a message how many messages do you receive what's the worst like what's the best how would you do it those kind of questions and the results were um even if like i knew what was coming but it was worse than i thought <laughs> and that was an eye opener and i really want to share that info on sourcecon yeah because i think like this is how we approach people and people I feel like I'm the ambassador of my I'm the first person from Pokey or whatever company I work at that will reach out to that person like 90% of the time I'm the first person who is connecting with someone from the outside about a job uh, so the impression I leave as a, as a recruiter or sourcer defines how they will think about my brand or about the company and how, how they will feel about that in the future. So that needs to be, for me, is, that's the feeling it needs to be good. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, I get a lot of messages myself and sometimes I think like, yeah, I thought I thought really well of this company and this recruiter just really messed that up i would never work for them uh and yeah that's kind of sad you know so that's that's something i'm trying well i want to talk about and i'm going to talk about the platforms where you can use that you can use to find developers because we all like LinkedIn is kind of that. I know a lot of developers who just remove their profile from LinkedIn because they got like tired of spam. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you have to be creative in the ways you find people. It's going to be hard with the whole GDPR thing, I guess, but well, that's another thing <laughs> we have to worry about later. And um, so I'll be talking about Gitter. Uh, I will be talking about CodePen, GitHub Trending, Hacker News, that kind of stuff. Uh, those are the okay. platforms I like to use. Other than kind of like outreach, is there anything like that you're working on that you feel really excited about at the moment? So anything kind of new or? Yeah. Um, well, Aaron, uh, Aaron Lynch got me really inspired <laughs> to uh, hack some uh, conference uh, lists. So I started doing that. I tried. I tried to do that before, but kind of got stuck when there was a closed environment. So I'm kind of into hacking and scraping things right now. Uh, that's a gold mine, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, wow. Uh, I have five colleagues who are going to a big event in San Francisco. I have a list of the attendees, so I can tell them, hey guys, go talk to this person, go talk to them, uh, you know? It's gold really start using that <laughs> everyone should do that uh next to that i'm uh i'm well this is just something i started with yesterday so it's kind of new <laughs> but i was um i'm having a new role and um uh, susanna um got me really inspired on making candidate personas mm -hmm. and it got me thinking well if i take 10 profiles or 10 resumes um and see what things they have in common by text mining. So I'm trying to start to do some uh, text mining in profiles. I'll just download a PDF from the LinkedIn page and um, compare what, what kind of words they use and how they talk about. And instead of what I would search for, I grew a team. They said, I built a team or I, I skilled up a team. And those kind of words, I'm trying to make different search strings based on the text that I find that they have in common. So that's really interesting. I think that's something I need to explore. I'm just, as we speak, downloading this uh, data science text mining uh, thing called Orange. So uh, that's really, I, I just like learning new stuff and, and uh, well, even if it doesn't work, I learned more about uh, text mining and text analyzing, and I can use that in for the rest of my life, you know? That's something, yeah. 
uh, those are the things that I'm really excited about. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad you started hacking some conference lists. And Aaron was telling me as well that you looked at his slides and you figured it out from that. Yeah, it was really cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I think I can do a lot more, uh, uh, with that but i like it because i, I learned so much while i'm doing yeah. that and uh, i'll get new ideas and i'll store all my ideas and that's that's kind of the problem with me being a uh, well recruiter and sorcerer is that you don't always have the time to just really geek out no. and do all the crazy stuff that i want to do uh, well i see it in in the company well and all the companies that have a sorcerer is like, why would you spend your time on creating vacancies and having, man, no. I, I think, or, or like the whole recruitment, but I was sitting with these two engineering managers on Monday and we, we were just, they really liked the whole hiring process and they were, they asked a few recruiters to talk to, to them about hiring and recruitment and it was really cool. And they asked me like, <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, recruitment. I said, yeah, I don't. I think recruit recruiters are going to be gone in a few years because why would you hire a recruiter if you have a sorcerer and the recruiter is only there for the scheduling part, you know, and the following up part? Because that's what, something I'm curious about. Um, uh, you are like the first contact, like yeah. I am, and then you do the first initial screening, right? You do we don't. A talk. You, Oh, you don't? We do the candidate ID and the outreach. So we have a couple of things. Um, our long lists are qualified by the, the hiring partners. So we don't reach out to anybody who hasn't been looked at by the people who's going to take over. Um, so we know that everybody who responds from there is somebody that they've looked at and it's not just somebody we looked at. No, um, that's the same thing as I did. Yeah, when we do screening, it's normally because there's no recruiter involved. Like with our agile process as well, that we're not going to start anything unless we have a calendar link so that we can get people to schedule themselves directly into the calendar of, of whoever's next in the process. Oh, that's really nice. That's um, yes. Yeah. And I did that. Like I did a lot of developers last year in my last role. I send the calendar link as the call to action. It's like, look, if you have 15 minutes, just put some time in my calendar. A lot of the developers like that because they didn't have to email me back or answer me. They just have to put in, click a link, put in their email, their phone number and pick a time. And that was yeah. it. Instead of that email ping pong, it's like, oh, can you do Thursday or Friday? Yeah. No. Okay. Can you do, what about these times? So it's like, here's my calendar, pick your own time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's one of the things that I love about Mixmax too. It's yeah. just easy. I don't want to like, no. I'll give you 20, 20 options and yeah. Yeah. Just put some time in my calendar whenever it suits you. And I've made it very broad, like early mornings, late evenings, you know, that, yeah. that they could choose at whatever time. And I had it open for the next two weeks. So they, like there's 50 slots every week that they could choose from. It's like, that's what it is. Yeah. And I only made it 15 minutes. So nobody was like, I don't want to spend that long with a recruiter. I said 15 minutes. I always block my own calendar for half an hour. So that I had that, but it was like 15 minutes, everybody can give you. But if they have more, if they have time, they'll spend half an hour with you. Yeah. But they're not committing to more than 15 minutes. So it's like, if they're not interesting, I can cut it off. If like they have an easy way to get out of it, if they're not interested in talking anymore, they only committed to 15 minutes. Yeah. So I found 15. that that was a good one for me. Oh, that's nice. That's a good advice. You predominantly work with uh, with Dutch people or, or candidates in the Netherlands, or are you more kind of international? Well, I would always start searching for candidates in the Netherlands because, well, it's the easiest way, you know, but I would also look for candidates outside of the Netherlands. Okay. And especially when I'm looking for a developer, for example, a backend developer, and I go through a GitHub trending list, I'm not going to filter them on the country. Uh, mm -hmm. I really don't care if they're on the other side of the world. If they're good, I uh, I want them to join us. And it would be easier if they were close, but I would also approach them if they're far away. So the, uh, the only problem with with that is um, it's not um, compared to candidates in the US, for example, um, the whole salary structure is different. So someone who's living in New York right now would be really hard to convince to move to Amsterdam for the set like the salary um, that yeah. we offer because the the rent is 
lower, for example, you know, that's kind of something you have to keep in mind when you're sourcing out of outside uh, Europe, uh, yeah. but also outside the Netherlands, I guess. Um, if, uh, like, if it's an international source and they, they were starting to sort in the Netherlands, what were some of the things that they would have to think about for like how you do think differently or is there a different way to approach Dutch people or Dutch developers? I'm not so sure. I think Dutch people are quite direct. <laughs> so uh, we don't like people who, uh, well, we don't, I'm speaking for myself right now. I can't judge other people, of course. Uh, I think we like um, uh, honesty. So like you're, um, you want something from me, tell me. And that doesn't mean you have to throw a job description to my head, <laughs> but just say, hey, let's grab a cup of coffee and don't say the whole, yeah, uh, I want to get to know you. No, yeah, you want to, but you know, <laughs> that's, that's kind of something I can I be direct and be honest and uh, don't say, like, don't make up something and then sell something else. I think mm -hmm. that's something that that's people really like. And other than that, I think um, Dutch people are really open to relocation. A lot of people I know, a lot of Dutch people are all around the world. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. Don't assume uh, for people. Don't don't uh, don't think of reasons why you shouldn't approach someone. That's something I would try to keep in mind when I'm sourcing. I, I shouldn't make up their minds. Uh, I should just ask them mm -hmm. um, because I know a lot of people who would say, no, no, they, uh, they live in Spain, for example, uh, they wouldn't want to move to the Netherlands. Why not? You know, I, I don't know if I haven't asked them. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's something uh, other than, yeah, about the Dutch people. I don't really know I'm Dutch. I don't think we're really <laughs> <laughs> everyone in the Netherlands speaks English. Well, not really good, but uh, we at least uh, uh, are decent in writing in English. So I guess that's no problem. They're used to getting approached in English. Uh, if you're walking okay. Amsterdam, you would, yeah, you would get into places where people don't even speak Dutch. So yeah, that's no problem at all. And you, like, I know you work with a lot of different tools. What's your, what's the tool that you wouldn't be able to live without? um that's that's interesting because someone asked me that last week and i was like yeah uh, <laughs> there, are, there are a lot of tools and i think google is my favorite tool one of them and uh, just using google and using some custom uh search engines um uh, next to that i really like to use mixmax it's my emailing tool Mm -hmm. um, it keeps track of the candidates uh, i approach how much <laughs> i i literally check my emails. I think everyone should if they uh, are reaching out to people. And I really like the layout of the email when I send a link. So it's, it looks really nice. Uh, next to that, I like the, uh, the open source intelligence tool. Since I started in recruitment, I don't know how I found it, but yeah, I really love that one. You can find literally anyone and every information you want over there. I use a lot of tools and I'm like watching product hunt 10 times a day to find out if, if there's any new thing around. But yeah, I, sometimes I, uh, I just stick with the basics and the, the, those are the tools that I like most. I'm going to be speaking to a lot of sources from around the world in the next years. Um, what's the thing that you would want to know from them? What I would like to know is I'm, I'm a recruiter and a sourcer, so I'm a recruiter who sources. <laughs> I kind of think it's interesting to learn how, uh, how people define them. What's the difference for a sourcer being only a sourcer and uh, what's, what's the difference in in that role, you know? Do you keep in touch with the candidates you hand over to the recruiter and how do you feel about that? Because that's the thing that I really like about my job is the final talk with someone, you know, and discussing with the team whether we're going to make an offer or not and, uh, well, helping them when they're onboarding. So that's really something that I would like to learn, like how do you keep in touch with the teams that this person is going to join? Yeah, how do you kind of follow that process and, and make sure they have the same good experience yeah. the whole process? 
Yeah, well, how do you keep the feeling with the, with the business when you're... Yeah. One thing I'm most curious about, actually, how are people going to uh, handle the whole GDPR thing? Because from the way I'm looking at it now, I think I just should move to the US and or find another job because yeah, but it's going the, to the be... problem is we can then only do US candidates because as soon as you touch a European candidate, you're still eligible with GDPR. My, I'm like, technically everything on Facebook and LinkedIn is public information. So. Yeah. But did someone put their profile on GitHub with the idea of being approached by a recruiter? So that's something I, I've read. I don't think anybody knows because it's like all the countries in EU have to figure out how to interpret the GDPR, what that actually means. And they're not really looking at us for why they want to do this. It's, it's like the big networks and things like that, but it's going to be interesting. If people want to follow you and, uh, and see what you continue to be up, how do they follow you? Well, you can find me on LinkedIn. Shmila van der Toren. <laughs> I think you'll put a link in there because my name is kind of hard. <laughs> uh, but if you're a sorcerer, you will uh, manage to find me. Uh, other than that, Twitter. There's some Dutch, but I think you'll learn eventually. <laughs> Otherwise, Google is your best friend. Well, I think you can find me anywhere if you just type in Shmila van der Toren and follow me anywhere. Add me on Facebook. I don't, I don't really see a difference between private and private accounts and non-private accounts because this is me and this is who I am. And Thank you so much, Mila, yeah. for, for your time. I'm looking Thank forward to, uh, to seeing you in, uh, in Budapest. Yeah. Um, and uh, and to, I'm hoping I can get to go to your talk as well. Yeah, well, I'm planning on doing some. I have too much to talk about. <laughs> I really have a strong opinion <laughs> about this. So I thought I might, uh, I might start uh, writing a blog on the first part and the last part so I can just, uh, well, uh, <laughs> focus on something, uh, uh, really focus on something because my talk is really starting to like be a lot. All the topics. starting to go down on the rabbit holes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, if you don't have the opportunity to, uh, to come to my talk. Uh, I hope I will. Yeah. On it. And, uh, we'll get there. I'll see you in Budapest. Absolutely. Have fun. Thank you. Yes, bye. Thank you all for watching. I'll be back next week with a new sourcing conversation. Make sure you subscribe to this show on YouTube and give us a like or go to the audio versions on either iTunes, Overcast, Spotify, or TuneIn and subscribe there to make sure that you got the latest show as soon as it comes out.